listeners, this is your pop culture maven, Jeff Malone, coming to you on December of uh, 2023. It's the last month in a year, can you believe it or that? We're actually recording in November, that's uh, it's a little trick I like to pull. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is your pop culture maven, Jeff Malone, and... Um, you're listening to a mini episode of Vets Entertainment. Uh, this is one of the uh, Aunt Beth tells Jeff to uh, mini episodes, in which my co-host Aunt Beth, while well, she's not on the mic with me at the moment, she is very much contributing by giving me a recommendation of some movie, TV show, album, song, internet video, etc. that I've somehow never experienced in full before she recommended it. So, uh, going into this season of That's Entertainment, I asked Aunt Beth for all of her recommendations for the foreseeable future, if they could be categorized as the classics, which is to say, anything released before I was born. So, before March 9th, 1988. And she gave me a few to start out with, with and I'm talking about one of them right now, because I've gone ahead and dived into it. And it is the 1982 Alan Parsons Project album, I in the Sky. Now, I have heard of Alan Parsons and his band before. I've known about them at least since 1999, I would have to say, uh, when they were referenced in Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. I believe it was the second Austin Powers where... They got name dropped. Uh, oh, Doctor Evil had a, a plan. The, like his lunar plan was going to be named the Alan Parsons Project, and the Moon Unit that they were going to be conducting their lunar business on was named Moon Unit Zappa. Uh, yeah. So okay. So what happens here? Ampeth gives me a recommendation. I check it out, and then I report back on the microphone to her and to you, the listeners, and uh, let everyone know what I thought about it. Will I continue listening to it in this case? You know, will I listen to this album again? Will I listen to more Alan Barson's project? Well, that's what we're going to find out. So while I don't think I've, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I better not have listened to this album in full before because that would just, if I had, that would ruin the, the entire premise of this mini episode. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, like at least 80% new to me, but not completely new because this album starts off with a very famous instrumental piece that I would venture to say that billions of people have heard, you know, maybe even 90% of the world, like at least 90% in the 1990s because that instrumental piece, Serious, is surely most famous for its use of introducing the Chicago Bulls starting lineup during Michael Jordan's time on the team. You know the you know the one. Dun 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 So you know obviously that's gonna put me in a good mood when that is how an album I'm listening to starts out. And uh then we move into the title track on track two, Eye in the Sky and it's a bit of a come down, and uh, yeah, after the excitement of Sirius, it's an appropriate decision. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I was very happy to listen to this album. I made sure to listen to it multiple times over the past few weeks to get uh, to suss out all the essential details, and it was not a burden, not at all. I was I was excited to re-listen to it each time. So there, there's your answer. I, I will re-listen to this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is this maybe one of my favorite albums of the 80s now? I don't know. It's too soon to say that. But uh, it's it's definitely enjoyable. Um, yeah. So besides Sirius, I think my favorite song is probably Psycho Babble. Uh, you know, this is a fun word to say. And, uh, you know, it's just... I forget what the rest of the lyrics are. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. But, you know, beyond just the the titular word, you know, they were just 
really working their tongues around that one in a, a satisfying way. So, so that was good. And then there was that was followed up by another instrumental piece called Mama Gamma. And uh, yeah, that that one was nice and steady. And you know, overall, this album it's kind of got like some of the psychedelic vibes that were really prevalent in the 70s. So they were still, you know, um, having, I don't know, like a a hangover from the previous decade. Although um, Alan Parsons doesn't, the Alan Parsons Project, they they didn't really strike me as a a very drug-fueled band. And maybe they partook a little bit in some mind-altering uh, cause it seems like pretty much everyone in the music industry was those days, but I, I'm not getting that vibe fully, you know, so I wouldn't ne- necessarily, you know, so hangover might be a m- bit of a misnomer, but they were, they were psychedelic in their right minds, perhaps is a better way to put it. Yeah. So it's, it's still got some of those seventies vibes and it's moving into a, a poppier, sort of new wave-ish vibe of the 80s, you know, that was allowed it to fit in with the year it actually came out during. Um, yeah, you know, I it, it kind of pops in and around here and there, you know, like, like, oh, this could have soundtracked a space opera, like one of the Star Wars, many Star Wars knockouts that came off, came out in, uh, late 70s and early 80s or it could have or some other songs could have soundtracked like uh, a crime drama even not like not one that was too gritty one that you know was like little um uh, you know not quite as silly as police squad but like the 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 easy watching police dramas that police squad was lampooning i, I suppose uh, so yeah, an, an interesting mix of vibes and styles, and, and the, it all holds together. So that's uh, Eye in the Sky by Alan Parsons Project. Listen to it on the internet, or buy it on CD, or vinyl, I suppose. I, I listen to it on a certain uh, music streaming service that is very popular these days. It's how I listen to a lot of music. It's quite convenient when I'm on my computer most of the working hours these days. Uh, okay, so that's... The, the, so I, I have to thank Ampeth for that recommendation. It went down quite, quite uh, lovingly. All right, moving on. Uh, I think next week I'm going to do a What's Jeff Watching mini episode. It's been a little while since I've done one of those, and I've, I've certainly been watching a plenty. And I'll check in with Aunt Beth and see if she's ha- she has anything to say on that subject as well. And hey, the strikes are over the writers and the actors' strike. And uh, sounds like they were pretty good deals. Um, maybe not 100% perfect, but uh, uh, a lot better then things were looking before the strikes began and uh, after that i think i'm gonna we're uh, i'm got some ideas in my head for some holiday themed episode nothing too big you know nothing as is uh as fantastical and elaborate as our our favorite movie christmas movies and favorite Christmas TV episodes and Christmas songs that we did the past few years. Just something to spread Christmas cheer quick on the holidays. Um, I don't know exactly what that'll be. I'll have to talk to Empath too. But uh, yeah, expect expect something holly jolly and relatively small in your podcast feeds before before you open presents. And then in January... We'll be talking about the Emmys, so that, that's what you'll have to look forward to in the near future when it comes to that's entertainment. Uh, all right. And you can follow us on social media. We're still on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can support us on Patreon if you like. You can listen to episodes early if you do that, and uh, keep your remotes handy and your eyes open.